Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the study that we have this morning and that we could come together to open your word. We pay, pray for your guidance and direction and that we can clearly see the things that you are showing us. We pray for this movement and for the people in it and for those that you are calling to study these things, those that are watching on the internet, and we just pray that you can bless them. Bless us now, be with us, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so this week we spent quite a bit of time trying to sort out uh, Daniel 11 verses uh, 3 and a little bit last week, um, 3 to 8, and particularly over the last day, uh, looking at 7 and 8. And we've been drawing these things out of, on a line, and we have, we, have, we have seen that the narrative, the story itself, supports the idea of a repetition of our line that we saw in the Persian line that we now see it in the Greek line. So that each time we look at the story or the prophecies in Daniel chapter 11, and we look at the history that unfolds, that narrative that unfolds, we can see that that narrative lines up with our history. Now we've had some uh, difficulty discerning exactly how we do that, um, but I think yesterday it became clearer on how that should be done. And one of the things that helped us is the use of these dates. And particularly, we have this 20th day of the first month, that's January 20th, um, that shows up in our lines. And these, of course, are these inauguration uh, dates, either inaugurations themselves or anniversaries of inaugurations. It's just the date in which an inauguration of the president uh, would occur. Um, and that these become significant with the symbols that we have in these Hebrew numbers. Now, somebody watching this who didn't go through the studies that we did in the book of Judges um, and even Odilio's study that uses Hebrew numbers. And we have been using Hebrew, uh, Strong's Hebrew numbers even prior to, to July 18. But we've seen them much more clearly, that they give us these spans of time. Um, and, and these represent days. So I think it's, it's pretty significant that we can have these numbers here doing what they do. So in the chart, you can see, um, and this is a bit of a review, but just for those who have been uh, maybe not watching all of the videos. So we have, for instance, the expression, the four winds of heaven. And if we add the Hebrew number 702, for four, that's um, Arba, and then Ruach, uh, 7307, and then Heavens, uh, which I think here is Shemaim. Um, I should check up which Hebrew word. It's usually the one it is. Um, and uh, so the four winds of heaven. Right, this is in verse four, yeah, Shemaim, okay. Uh, then if we add them up together, we get 16,073 days. Now, that is the number of days from how we had first looked at. So we didn't use the number of days to create these dates. We actually had created the dates earlier. That is, we had looked at the Afghan-Soviet war, that goes from December 24th, 79 to February 15th, 89. And so we had started this line at that date. And if we count from that date to this other date, December 25th, 2023, now that date was, in a sense, created from these numbers. That is, we looked and counted this word, um, which is... Uh, the word years to represent this period of, of time. And so we count from September 11th, 2001, and we use that number 8141 
that is uh, the word uh, Shana in Daniel 11, 6, when we dealt with the end of years. And we, we, we count those number of days, an ordinal count from September 11th, and it comes to December 25th, 2023. And so we could see that as significant. So when we take this 16,073 days and do an inclusive count from the start of that war on Christmas Eve in 79, it brings us to Christmas Day 2023 that's coming up. That cannot be a coincidence. So that, that we have these two witnesses, the word years and the word four winds of words, four winds of heaven, uh, giving us that December 25th, 2023 date. So, so that was significant. We also had, um, uh, if we counted from, uh, that is, we take just the word four wins, it's 809 days. And that's going to bring us um, from um, the start of that war in uh, December 24th, 79 or no, it's actually to the end of the war, pardon me. So it's going to bring us to the February 15th date. And if we count from the February 15th date, it brings us to January 20th, 2011. So it gives us that January 20th date, right? Now we also have the January 20th date because we can take the word stand up and we count from September 11th, 2001, and it gives us January 20th. 2018. So there's a period of seven years between these two dates. Now, in Colin's study, so this is what we looked at yesterday. He has this period of 1,535 days. Now, I don't have this clearly marked here, so I need to put this in. Um, so I'm going to just do it here. I'm going to borrow this. So we're going to take this um, this period to January 20th, 2021. So this is the inauguration of Biden. And we're going to go back to uh, this November 9th, 2016. So that's when Trump uh, is pronounced the king of the United States, right? He becomes president. And this period of time is 1,533 days. So I'm just going to put this here. Now, the thing that was significant about this, of course, is we use this, what Colin had presented um, on the previous Sabbath, this last Sabbath, um, that we had this structural chiasm of these um, 1,533 days. So we had another period of 1,533 days. And we could see that what it showed is that January 20th, 2021 is a parallel to um, 1798, right? So 1798, that's February 15th, 1798. There's 190 years between that and the end of the Afghan-Soviet war. And um, so this starts to become uh, this, this pattern that uh, I'm just going to put this box like this. Um, just like that, so you can see what that is. Um, so this pattern that that connects all of these different events, that is, we're taking the time of the end, 1798, and the time of the end in 1989, and we're putting them together. But when Colin looked at this, he saw the 186 days from July 18th. And so he says, July 18th is the first disappointment and January 20th is the second. Now, there's sort of a way in which you could understand that because we have two different predictions. We have July 18th and dealing with the president of the United States. And so when Biden is inaugurated, that definitely puts to end any idea that you're going to have Trump continue to be president in that period of time. So, so, you know, you could sort of argue that that might be meaningful. Now, we have these two January 20th, the, the one in 2011, the one in 2020, and we have the word estate. 
So the word estate is 3653. That is, it is exactly 10 years if you counted it as days. So that's as close as you can get to 10 years is to have that Hebrew number, right? Representing 10 years. Um, so we're saying that him coming to his estate, the one that comes to his estate here, and, and the question was asked, and I wasn't quite sure if I understood the question, but, but I think it's correct, is that this is the one that is. So if we're talking about the, the kings in Revelation 17, those seven kings, the five are fallen, the one is. The one is, is the one who becomes king on January 20th, 2021. That is Biden. So he is the sixth king, right? So we saw it from the Persian study. Sorry about that. We saw it from the Persian study. So we can see here that it's giving us this same information, just in a different way. Right? And it's using Greece to do it, not Persia. So even though this relates to what we see in the Persian kings, we're now seeing represented in Greece. It's not in, in the context of kings. It's just in the context of this king of the north and the king of the south. Right, so we're going to look at those scriptures again. So these are the pertinent numbers here. Now, again, that word pride, which we looked at yesterday, um, this has comes from the pride of the power, right? So this is the expression that we see in Ezekiel. Um, was it chapter 24, verse 25? Um, I think it was, it was started, it was 25, 24, I can't remember. Um, but you see that section there where it's going to quote basically from Leviticus 26. It's going to, it's, it's not going to be translated as pride of your power. It's, it's going to be like, like um, the majesty of your strength or something like that. But that word pride is one, three, four, seven. And that was in Collins lines. That is, he took the 1533 days and he divided it as 1347 days, and 186 days. And that is, he's lining up August 11th, 1840, with November 9th, 2016, July 18th, with 2020, with April 19th, 1844, and January 20th, 2021, with October 22, 1844. And that's why he, he argues this is the first and second disappointment. Now, it kind of is, right? But it kind of is in a larger context. That is, it's a, a line within a line. It's a wheel within a wheel. And so when we take into account all of the information, um, we can see that that it's not the, the second disappointment in the, in the broader line. It's just within this line. It's illustrating these two disappointments, these two predictions. That Trump would be the last president of the United States and that July 18, 2020 was going to be this a nuclear attack on Nashville. Neither occurred. But we know that the timing of these and the significance of these were correct. It's just that we didn't understand where we were in the lines. And so we, we can accept this January 20th, 21 date um, as the period where we start the one that is. So you're not going to have the five or fallen one is with the one is being Trump. The one is is Biden. And so it's illustrated here. And so we're going to look at Daniel 11 again and try to put together all of these, these this scripture, all of this, this section, and show that it's illustrating this history. So we're going to go back there and see that what we originally had assumed, that this applies to our history, can clearly be shown from the scriptures, the understanding of these passages. Okay. So is that clear as far as, was there anything else in there that I should have noted before I changed screens? Um, I mean, there are other dates in there, but those aren't the main main dates. So I, I think those would be good enough. The other ones just kind of put the, the kind of the glue that holds these dates together, but they're not the necessary dates. 
Okay. So we have, if we go back here, we have a mighty king shall stand up. So a mighty king shall stand up. This is, of course, Alexander historically. But in our lines, this represents the Soviet Union, right? That is, there's a parallel between the Soviet Union and the papacy. The papacy, of course, is the papal power. The Soviet Union is the dragon power, right? But in our history, that's what's being illustrated. So when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and be divided towards the four winds of heaven. So this is going to be our line. And not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be plucked up, even for others besides those. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. So in verse 5, the king of the south represents... after the division of the Soviet Union, the United Nations, because this King of the South is a characteristic of atheism, right? France is the King of the South in 1798. In 1989, the King of the South in Daniel chapter 11, verse 40, is the USSR. But here, when the USSR falls and it's scattered towards the four winds of heaven, we recognize that that king of the south passes to something else. That characteristic passes to the UN. Would we agree with that? Does this on the king of the south begin symbolically as Egypt and then right. begin? So you're, you would agree with that? Okay, so it began as Egypt way back in the time, you know, the Israelites, right? I would say that that's about right. Yeah, yeah. so you have the king of the south, and the king of the north is Babylon, right? In, in that context, before we even get to the fall of Greece. Now, when we get to the fall of Greece, the king of the south is still going to be Egypt, the king of the north is going to be the Seleucid Empire, right? That's going to have conquered uh, Persia, but Persia had first conquered Greece, or, uh, not Greece, but Babylon, right? So this king of the north is is in reference in the in these literal histories of literal Israel as a reference to the kingdom that comes from the north when it comes to invade, or the kingdom that comes from the south when it comes to invade, right? So, but we know that that in 1798, the king of the south is not Egypt, right? Correct. It, it's going to be France because France is Sodom and Egypt. And it's characteristic, it's atheist uh, characteristic and it's licentiousness. And what, now, is, what, what is one of the main points that comes out in 1798 during the French Revolution? Um, what, what, what do you mean? Like the atheism? Or what are you talking about? Aren't they, aren't they very focused upon, about what they call the rights of man? Okay, yeah. So the rights of man. So that's going to be when, once we get to this agreement, right? Right. Okay. So, so we can see that back here we're dealing with, with the fall of the Greece, the fall of Greece and its divisions. But there is this application that comes to our time that parallels 1798. So we have what happens originally. These things are all being illustrations. This past history is illustrations of things that are going to happen again. And um, so we can see that this characteristic of the king of the south is this, this atheism and licentiousness, but it's also based upon the rights of man, which which is we're seeing a crisis in the world today on these so-called rights, because there is the rights that God gave us, which are individual rights. 
Uh, but this rights of man is more a licentious types of rights, right? Correct. They're, they're, so they're not really about individual rights in the way that uh, the American Constitution has them. This is more uh, more a type of rebellious rights, if we want to put it that way, rebellious to God's law, which is is quite different. Okay, so that's that's an important point there. So we know the king of the south here, um, obviously, is Egypt. But in our history, if we're going to deal with the fall of the Soviet Union, the king of the south here is has to be that characteristic of Egypt, which is its atheism. And also we can say it's the, you know, the rights of man, if you want to call it that. right? So that's something that the UN is always supposedly fighting for is human rights, but they're, they're putting the rights as what we would call group rights, right? This isn't about individual rights. The UN does not care about your individual rights. It's, it's, it's a sort of type of double speak where you talk about rights, but you're actually trampling upon individual rights to do so. I think we, we can quite clearly see that in, in the pandemic. Um, now, as far as the king of the south shall be strong and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him and have dominion, his dominion shall be the great dominion. We haven't really defined who one of his princes. But, and, and, it, and it doesn't really say and one of his princes, though that's kind of implied. Um, the king of the south shall be strong and of his princes is what they have here in uh, the one is an added word. Um, so, uh, but but historically, we can say that it is one of the princes, right, or one of the kings, and that is. Uh, but I don't I don't know I don't know if I like this translation. Now, the, the word prince is sar. Uh, the reason why they put one of it, the princes is this word here is um, uh, it's in a uh, plural form. Sarin. Um, and let me see here. Uh, so that's weird. Sorry. Um, I think maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Okay, so um, that doesn't make sense. I'm doing something wrong. I know it. Um, Yeah, it's just a mass. It's a masculine plural. Okay. Um, so the king of the south, and and this word of is um, it, it means lots of different things. It says of his princes, and he shall be strong. So it doesn't necessarily one of his princes shall be strong, but it's just. So I'm not sure why it's in the plural and why I don't know if one is implied. Um, so um, and he shall be strong. It says the king of the south. 
or so maybe that's what above him and have dominion so above so i guess it's just saying that um i don't know if it's saying that one of the princes but anyway the king of the south and i would say maybe we would say that this just is the first prince or the first king is going to be greater above who so when it says above him that's not saying one of his princes is greater than the king of the south. It's It would be a greater than the king of the north. So I would think it would actually be uh, the one of his princes is one of the princes of the king of the north, not of the king of the south, is how I would read it. But I don't know if that, that distinction makes much sense, but... Um, I'm not really sure I understand this verse, but so who shall be strong above who? He shall be strong above him. So who's the he and who's the him? Now that's the question, I guess. How would we interpret this? So we know there's the king of the south and the king of the north are being referred to. So when it says he shall be strong above him, the he and the him are two different people, right? So is the he the king of the south and the him the king of the north? Or is the he the king of the north and the him the king of the south? How would you understand that? Uh, the English Standard Version says, then the king of the south shall be strong, but one of his princes shall be stronger than he and shall rule, and his authority shall be a great authority. So that's quite a bit different reading. Okay. So if we if we take this context, yeah, starting in Daniel eleven two. Okay, we know that the fourth king of Persia. Okay. After the time of Darius, right? Because yeah. So this Xerxes. Okay. The fourth shall be richer than they all. Yeah. And by his strength, through his riches, he, the fourth king, yeah. will stir up all against the realm of Grisha. Mm -hmm. Now, 11.3 is not the fourth king of that line of Persia. Right, we know that this is Alexander. Okay. And that this mighty king shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. Now, this verse had been linked with the translators to Daniel 11.16 and 11.36, which we will get into later. Well, and we looked at this. So we know that this parallels this characteristic. It's also to Daniel 8, verse 4. Um, that this is a characteristic that is first mentioned in 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 connection with with um, Medo Persia. So this has to do with law, right? This has to do with the, with the types of laws that they have. And and so when he does according to his will, this is a characteristic that the papal, papacy later has in seeking to change times and laws. Um, so this. This can allow us to parallel uh, these powers at the time of the end that have this characteristic. Rita Persia has it at the, at the time of the end, which would be the time of the end in 530, 539 to 537, right? And then we see it also 
um, in the time of the end, connecting with the end of the Persian kingdom and the rise of Greece. So, so when Greece has, has this characteristic, it's then going to be divided. Same thing happens in 1798 with the papacy. And, and so we, we can just look at this characteristic and see that it's, it's a consistent characteristic that happens when a kingdom falls, right? Connected with a fall in, in some way or another, either that kingdom falls or it's causing the fall of another kingdom, but there's a transition that happens there. Okay, so Alexander's kingdom's gonna be broken. Okay, go on. But we have <clears throat> what we are saying here with Daniel 11, three, we've identified this as being a mighty king that is to stand up rules with great dominion and does according to his rule his will and this mighty king is not of the persian lineage right he's greek he's macedonian okay. yeah it's alexander the great <clears throat> And and he's going to parallel the Soviet Union is what we're saying, the fall of the Soviet Union. And when and, he, okay, yeah, and when he shall stand up, the mighty king, when the mighty king stands up, yeah, his kingdom shall be broken, and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. Now, again. We've identified this historically as being with Alexander. Right. Alexander's kingdom is going to be divided towards the four winds of heaven. Yeah. Okay. So this part of the kingdom is divided. This is divided into four How, how it says divided toward the four winds of heaven. So we we know that it is a fourfold division. Well, yeah, it's divided different ways, seven, five, uh, and eventually two, and then finally one. But so so the division here is not so much that there's four kingdoms, even though there will be at one point. It's just the direction in which it's divided. It's divided north, south, east, and west. So it's going to be the north and the south that survive. And the king of the south shall be strong and of his princes, if we drop out the added word. Yeah. So the king of the south is to be of the mighty king's princes. Right. So one of Alexander's princes, if we're going to say that. If we're going to take the historical application, correct. Yeah. So it'd be one of the generals. So it's of his generals. So the king of the south is of his generals. That's Ptolemy. Right? Right. Because... What this would seem to indicate is as this began as a successor of the king of the north, it's now segueing into this, this situation. So just like what you were saying before, we're looking at this as being Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming that this is no longer... Soviet Union. Right. So is do it, we... Yeah, okay, go on. Do, do we place this as the equivalence of Russia right now? No. So it's not Russia. It has to be the UN. So so Jeff was suggesting, when he realized that we have this repeat of history, he was saying, well, it must be Moscow because it comes up to the neck and, and the head, the capital is Moscow. And so he used um, uh, Isaiah 7 and 8 to argue that, that Moscow was still the controlling power. And he, he did this back in 2016 when we were at the School of the Prophets. 
he, he did a presentation where he brought up this book where he had part of the cover cut cut out. Um, I can't remember the title of the book, but it, it dealt with this idea that the fall of the Soviet Union, they did this purposefully with this longer view. They realized they couldn't win that battle. And by destroying the Soviet Union, uh, they could still maintain their power. But even if that is the case, the characteristic of the King of the South doesn't stay with the, with Russia, right? It's no longer an atheistic power. It's a religious power, right? It's gone back to Orthodox uh, Christianity. And so, so this UN, if we're going to say that it's going to be strong above him, the him being Alexander, right? The mighty king that stood up. I think that's what you're implying here. That this king of the south is going to even be stronger than Alexander. Now, in the historical context, that is kind of true. Because Alexander had built this empire. But his empire was. It wasn't it wasn't a well-established empire. I mean, it was basically conquering his enemies. Right. And, and we're going to see that the king of the south in establishing Egypt, he establishes on a stronger footing than Alexander would have had as far as Egypt is concerned. Right. And and Egypt is going to be stronger. This this prince, he's going to be stronger in that sense. Obviously, he's not conquering as much territory as Alexander. But he establishes a kingdom that is stronger than what Alexander had established. I don't know if that people are going to agree with that or not. Well, it's interesting because the what the king of the south had established mm -hmm. lasted much longer. Yes. Than anything that that Alexander had established. Yeah, and, and the thing about Egypt is that it is actually the most stable of all those kingdoms. Right. Those divisions, right? Now it's in the end going to lose in you know, because it'll it'll be conquered ultimately by by Rome. Rome is going to conquer Egypt. And so Rome is going to be obviously stronger than all these other kingdoms. Um so that's going to be what 30 BC or whatever that we have for the fall of Egypt. But um we, we can see that that's true. And if we look at the, at, if we're making the application today, we can definitely see that the United Nations is much stronger than the Soviet Union was. Agreed. Yeah. So, so that application to here would fit as well. So Egypt's going to have the most stable of those divisions of Alexander's kingdom. Um, you know, it's not going to be passing back and forth between different uh, the dynasties. It's one dynasty. The Ptolemaic dynasty lasts that whole time. Um, so, so I think that makes sense that to be strong above him is above the mighty king that stands up. Not just against, you know, being stronger than the king of the north. Right. And he's going to have, you know, dominion three times. He shall have dominion. The word dominion, different, different word in one case, but it's still all related. Well, it's all it's all related. But why? I mean, what symbol do we see from this having this repetition three times? OK, well, so you're going to have. Uh, Dominion shall be a great dominion. That's the same Hebrew word, 4474. Um, but when he shall be strong and have dominion, that's a different word, mashal. But they are related. Mimshal is a ruler. His rulership, I guess, in this case, um, shall be a great rulership. But he shall have dominion, that is, he shall rule. So, I mean, they're all related words. 
Um, but the two that are are doubled are are the four four seven four. That's doubled. Four nine one ten is not. So, <clears throat> but this this would put it if we're going to try to apply it in our history into that uh, second angel's message history is where I would put it. Okay. So. <clears throat> So we can show that, that, that there's this UN, right? So we're going to say that this king of the south is the UN. And at the end of years, they shall join themselves together. So there's going to be a league. So we have the UN, which we call the dragon power, the globalists, right? Um, it's Egypt. Um, we have, uh, of course, the king of the north, right? In our history, that's going to be the United States. It's 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 the papacy, but it's represented as the king of the north being the United States because the papacy is using the United States as its power, right, in this context. And they're going to make an agreement so we can see that this rights of man, that all of these, these powers, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, are, are going to work together to have these rights of man. We see this happen in our history, right? This fake rights of man, this counterfeit rights of man. And so you're going to take this, make an agreement, which is to promote rights, right? That word, um, a saw, which is make, means lots of different things. But one thing it means is to advance, right? So, so the idea is that it's advancing human rights in this, in this agreement. So the United States has reached its hand across the Gulf um, to grasp hands with the Roman power. That's in 1989. And then it's going to reach across the abyss and make an agreement with the dragon power, right? The spiritualism. And so this is what we see happening. This agreement here is connected to the Sunday law. But we can see that it's it precedes the Sunday law. That is, this is like the image to the beast. It's what we see happening in our history since 9-11. 9-11 begins the Sunday law. This verse can represent 9-11. 11-6, turned upside down, is 9-11. If you just rotate it, you know, either left or right. Um, okay, so so we can see that this refers to our time. But then it says, she shall not retain the power of the arm. So the she is a church. The arm is the military power, right? So this is the daughter of the king of the south. So this is some kind of religious power, right? Neither shall he stand nor his arm. So the he is referring to which? The king of the south or the king of the north? I would have to think King of the South. Yeah, so we would say it's the King of the South. So we would say the UN is not going to um, to be able to, to stand, right? Nor his arm, nor his military power. But she shall be given up, right? So this, this philosophy, this woman, this church is going to be given up. And they that brought her. So we have to figure out who the, they are. And she whom they begat, they're all going to be given up. And also he that strengthened her in these times. So the he that strengthened her in these times would be who? So we have uh, the he which we say is going to be the king of the south. He shall not stand. She is this religious philosophy or power, right? So it's religion. She's going to be given up. And they that brought her, so um, who's they that brought her? They that want, want the Sunday law, like the apostate Protestants, the evangelicals, in my yeah, opinion. So, yeah, so the question is, is this referring to they, is this the king of the north that brought her to the king of the north, that, that invited her into the United States? And those whom she begat? Right, were brought forth. So those would be 
the churches that are the result of this that has happened. And we can see that this is happening all through this history, through the, through, uh, the 80s and 90s, right? This is all happening. But it, it definitely comes to a fore because um, he that strengthened her in these times. Now, these times, the word times, time, right, just means now, right? Now or when. Um, but it had this characteristic 6256. Now, what did we do with that number? 6256. Do you remember what we did with it? As a period of time. Not right off. Yeah, I don't even remember. So, um, so it's 17 years and um, 17 years and 47 days. And that we did something with it. Um, just going to see if I can figure this out. I don't know why I don't. There's a few things I don't remember. Um, six two five six. What did we do with it? I think I might have. We counted it from. Uh, I believe it was um, January twentieth, nineteen eighty nine. I think, but I'm just going to see if that's the one. No, it's not it. We did do something from January 20th, 1989. I don't remember which one that one was. Um, which, which did we count from January 20th, Oh, yeah, that was the one where we counted to uh, the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. And that's going to be the end of years that was, we're going to use that the whole span there. So, um, so it wasn't from there. Okay, so the thing about this date is 6256. If you count it from November 9th, um, it's going to bring, it's going to give you, so it must have been November 9th, 1980. Um, so anyway, it's a November 9th. Which year? Well, in any year, if you count from November 9th, I shouldn't say any year, there's probably some that are different. But if we go, um, yeah, so if we go from 2023, it'll bring us back to November 9th, 2006. So it connects a November 9th date with a December 25th date. Um, but it's, it's going to be 17 years apart, right? So it's going to be 17 years from November 29th to November 9th. And then it's going to give you uh, the date that the extra 46 days is going to bring you to December 25th. So, um, so what December 25th is that going to be? Right, so that's the question. So obviously, um, 
you know, if we go from 2019, you know, it's going to bring us way into 2030 something. So the two November 9ths that we have are 2019 and 1989. So the thing is, it connects a November 9th date with the December 20, 25th date. That's all I'm saying. But which November 9th? Um, like if we use 2016 again, that's going to bring us to December 25th, 2033. So, so obviously that's not the correct November 9th. Um, so anyway, that's going to be uh, something we have to look at further, I guess. Okay. Any other thoughts? So we got this um, times, strengthened her in these times. So that word 6256 is an inclusive count okay. from November 9th. Uh, six, sorry, Theodore, I was going to say six times two times five times six times two, 360 also. So you've got a prophetic year there, if that is any significant. Okay, I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, my net has been really wobbly today. Six times two times five times six gives you a 360. So there's a prophetic year there. Uh, I don't know uh, if that okay. fits anywhere, but I just got curious. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, <laughs> thanks. That is really, really good. So it gives you a prophetic symbol that is six times two times five times six is 360. So it's a symbol of prophetic time. But also that number of days connects us from November 9th to December 25th, which is one of the main characteristics of these lines. Um, so, so anyway, when, when we have this verse, we can now see who the players are, that this is the history that we are in since 9-11. Now it says, but out of the branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate. Now, it's the branch of her roots, and one stands up in his estate. So the branch of her roots relates to, in our time, to the roots of the king of the south. So her roots, so this religious power. And one shall stand up in his estate. So out of a branch of her roots, one stands up in his estate. And we looked at this 3653, and we could say that this is a period of 10 years. And if we count from on our chart here, so just go back to the chart. Um, we have this date. Using the four winds, it comes to January 20th, 2011. Right. So we have that symbol there. And if we count three, six, five, three days, it brings us to the inauguration. Um, uh, which is here. Wait, where is it here? Eleven twenty one. So one of these dates is wrong. What, where's the date that we needed? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong chart. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so, um, so we count from January 21, 2011, and the word estate is going to bring us to January 20th, 2021. Now, uh, just thinking about this here too. Ah, so if we go from uh, November 9th, 1989, We're going to come to, um, so we could count, let me see here. So if we counted 17 years, that would bring us to 2016. And 46 days would bring us to December 25th in 2016. So I don't know if that's significant. But anyway, let's just go back to this word estate. So this word estate is going to bring us to this January 20th, 2021 date, because it's 10 years. So, so if we look at this, these verses here, 
uh, one shall stand up in his estate. So this word stand up is 5975, right? So you can see this here in this um, this chart here. You can see the word stand up. Now this is, of course, a different verse, but the word stand up is 5975. And that's going to bring us from September 11th to January 20th, 2018, right? So it's not going to bring us to 2021, but it's going to bring us to 2018. But it's still going to give us that symbol, right? January 20th. So the standing up in his estate, this is an inauguration date. That's what we can say that this is. Okay, does that make sense? So this is talking about the one that stands up in his estate in um, verse 7. Out of the branch of her roots, this woman, this church, that's the daughter of the king of the south, this is globalism. So this is a reference to Biden. And it says, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north. So the fortress of the king of the north is the constitution, correct? The way we've been looking at it. Right. So we did a study on this, Ma'az, right? Now, it's also the strength. You can see Ma'az is a mem with the word Oz, and the word Oz is strength or power, like the pride of your power. Power is Oz. And so we looked here at Ezekiel um, to look at this, what this is. So this is the Constitution. And does that occur with Biden? Does he enter into the fortress of the king of the north? I would see that as uh, as being relevant. And it says he comes with an army. That word army means a force, whether men, means, or other resources. Chayil, right? So he shall enter into the fortress, Ma'az, of the king of the north. And shall deal against them and shall prevail. This word deal um, means lots of different things. Uh, so govern, appoint, there's all kinds of different things. It's just, it's just an action to do or to make, right? So he does against them and he prevails. Um, that is to seize or fasten upon, right? It's to seize, be strong. Um, Right. So lots of different things that it can be translated as, but it may, means basically to fasten, to grab. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land. Oh, pardon me, I skipped that whole verse eight. And he all, and shall also carry captives into Egypt. Right. So this is Egypt. So the king of the south we can see clearly his is Egypt, uh, but this is a branch of their roots. Carries captives into Egypt, their gods with the, their princes, with their precious vessels of silver and gold, and he shall continue more years than the king of the north. Right. So this is this characteristic of the king of the south. So when he gets these precious vessels, silver of gold and so forth, what is this referring to? Economic power. Okay. So silver, of course, kesef, gold, zaba, zahab, right? So we've got gold and silver. So this is uh, money. We got precious vessels, right? Um, so how, how would this relate to our history with the king of the south? Now, this is not particularly the king of the south, right? This is the branch of her roots that establishes this kingdom. Now, we know historically this is going to be the kingdom of Egypt that is established at the beginning. And, and, and that's going to be uh, this 
this dynasty that's going to last, last longer than in any of the dynasties in the Northern Kingdom and the Seleucid Kingdom, right? But if we're applying this to our history, what, what's actually happening with the King of the South? What is What has happened in the United States under Biden? Has the resources of the United States been given to the UN? Could could we say that? In many that ways, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now this has been happening for quite a while, but um uh so, you know, we'd have to figure out how we would specifically argue this, what's happening under Biden. So what, 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 what examples would we use to illustrate this? So he enters into the fortress of the King of the North. It has to do with the constitution, with the rights of man, he shall deal against them and shall prevail. Um, we're not really sure who the them is, just the king of the north in general. So the, the, the kingdom of the north. Um, but he carries captives into Egypt. Their gods. Um, I'm just looking at some of these words. Just tip the words. Okay. Now it says here they're princes, but actually the word means libation, uh, usually something poured out. And the idea is it would be more a molten image, but it can be translated uh, drink offering, duke or prince. That's the way the King James translates it. But it probably means something poured out, a libation. So carries the captive of Egypt, their gods, their libations, with their precious vessels, silver and gold. So but this is, is that, what? Is that dealing with a prince or is it dealing with a principle? Well, I wouldn't say a principle. I mean, yes, they can translate it as principle, right? But principle is... Um, is related to our English word is related to the word prince, right? A principle is just a rule, right? In in the old fashioned sense. It's like the rule that underlies law. But it originally originally comes from this word prince. So yeah, so they translated as principle. Um but you're trying to apply this then that um that basically the US it's our gods and our money are basically removed. The true God, I don't know how you would look at it because this is dealing with the king of the north, the king of the south. But in the idea here is that uh, that this is a spiritual con conquering of the U.S. Right? I guess is that what you were saying? That's a major way of looking at it, yeah. Because when we when we look at this in principle, they're taking a lot of things to become law that mm -hmm. had never been law before. Right. They're establishing a lot of principles that mm -hmm. are foreign to the way in which we've looked at things over historically. Yeah, and, and part of the way in which the economics has been overtaken is is basically – um these um huge multinational corporations that headed out of the US have become completely woke. Right? Agreed. At least in form or whatever, you know. So the whole economic system of the world has been taken over with this philosophy.
So what are the captives that they're taking to Egypt? What symbol can we can we devolve from this? Well, they're car carrying captives, the gods, the principles, right? And the precious vessels of silver and gold. So, so Egypt, the globalists, have taken the world captive at this point, which includes the king of the north being taken captive, right? Is that what you're pointing at? Yes. Okay. okay what else? Well... <clears throat> They're going to carry these captives into Egypt with their principles. They're not taking rulers. They're making these rules that are making people think that they are higher in I don't know if esteem is the right word, but higher in power than they actually are. Okay. I mean, anybody that's that's looked around recently with some of these these crazy things that have gone on would think that everything woke right now is of such great importance. But how is that seen in the light of what we what we find in the Bible directly? I mean, it's bothered me for years that we have seen others even allow different types of Bibles to support points that that are completely anti-biblical. Mm -hmm. So we have this, this entire situation that out of a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate As we were as we were addressing that, this is standing up in his place. Okay. Now, after standing up in his place, they're going to carry into Egypt, into paganism, or back to paganism, their gods their principles, and then their precious vessels of silver or gold, or and of gold, or their vessels of desire. How many times have, are, are these principles being looked at as being something worthy to have? Hmm. So that's the thing that that I'm considering here because we're seeing so many that are given over to their very desires, the, the things that's of their heart. Mm-hmm. So does that apply with what we're with what we're looking at here? Yeah, so this is just intellectually, economically, spiritually, we see that the the kingdom of the north, the United States, has been taken captive to Egypt. Agreed. Yeah. 
So then in, in 11.9, it says, so the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land. Right. So. Now, the idea here is the king of the south is going to retreat. It's going to take these captives, go to its own land with these things. But his son shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of great forces. So we can say that this whole section is, is Daniel 11, verse 40a, right? It would give a good application. Yeah. So it's, it's the king of the south coming against the king of the north. That's what it's about. So at the end of the papacy in 1798 is Daniel 11, verse 40. But here we can say that that characteristic of 1798 can be seen in our history with the king of the south defeating the king of the north. Now, we normally look at the king of the north defeating the king of the south in 1989. But we're just saying that that this king of the south defeating the king of the north is also a characteristic, but in a different aspect of that history, because the Soviet Union is going to fall. And so we wouldn't say that this is 1989 so much as September 11th and onward, Sunday long. So this is that response of the King of the South illustrated by what happens in Daniel 11, verse 40a. The King of the South conquers the King of the North. And that happens in our history, just as it did in that history. But it's a different power, right? It's it's the UN. It's not France. So so it could be confusing, just because we're looking at a different aspect of it. We're looking at a different time. We're looking at nine eleven. Now, when we get to Daniel eleven nine. Um, we can understand that as 9-11 as well. But 9-11 is also November 9th, 1989. Now, in this movement, we know that um, if we're going to look at what happened with our Minders group, it's represented by this spiritualistic, atheistic sort of idea, right? This rights of man. Right. And it's going to take captive the majority of this movement. Right. It's going to take a lot of the resources. It doesn't get the School of the Prophets or Lambert Church. But the majority of the people end up following that movement. Much less is left uh, following uh, what this movement was originally about. So there's some, sort of a parallel there. Um, and so we can put that at November 9th. But November 9th becomes this symbol, right? It, it's related to 9-11. But we're, we're going to say that Daniel 11-9 is more about November 9th as a symbol than as September 11th as a symbol. It's related, right? September 11th is related to November 9th. But it's, it's bringing us through this history from 9-11. So 9-11 is the king of the south coming to conquer the king of the north again, right? And so is 11-9. So is November 9th, 9, 2019. So it's just going to bring us to that history. Now, we know that Biden isn't going to be the president on November 9th. But if we're just saying that November 9th as a symbol is representing the time after November 9th, this is going to happen after November 9th if we're applying it to our time. So I'm just saying that this line, this history from verse 3 to verse 9 is repeating the history of this movement in that time, not just the movement itself, but what's happening externally as well. 
It's repeating our line. So when we get to verse 10, this is going to be the Battle of Raphia. Now, we could argue that verse 9 kind of goes with this. Because the Battle of Raphia, we're going to apply to November 9th, right? All right. And here, but here we're now, we're having different players, in a sense, involved, even though it's the king of the south and the king of the north. It's, this is much more, um, because we were looking for external events. We were looking at the king of the south to be the Soviet, to be Russia, and the king of the north to be the United States. That's what Parminder's movement was teaching. But that didn't happen. But we can see that here in this history, but the sun shall be stirred up and shall assemble a great multitude of forces, and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through, and then he shall return and be stirred up even to, to his fortress. So this is the sons of the king of the south, right? And the king of the south shall be moved with collar and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north, and he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. So when we look at this in our history, instead of it being Russia and the United States, it becomes about Republicans and Democrats, right? Restate that, please. So instead of being about Russia and the United States, as Jeff suggested, it's going to be about Republicans and Democrats, this conflict. All right. So the Battle of Raffia, even though we mark it at November 9th, it's going to be representing that history when the King of the South is going to be coming against the King of the North. That is, the King of the South is going to win this battle. That's January 6, 2021. And, of course, that's going to lead to January 20th, 2021, right? So this is the Democrats defeating the Republicans in the United States. If we're going to place the Battle of Raffia in that way. Now, it's still going to be connected to November 9th, 2019, because Odilia has showed us that uh, that history um, is going to be about the pandemic, Right. We're going to have the pandemic beginning in that history in November of 2019. And it's going to be these forces, uh, the sons of the King of the South, that are going to come against. And, and this overflow represents the Sunday law. We know that this is a type of the Sunday law. Right. So so we can see that. So these are what we're going to have to look at. We're going to have to. So because we can see up to verse nine, it's going to bring us this symbol of 11, nine, November 9th. And it's it's what's happened from September 11th to 2000. 19, so September 11th, 2001 to November 9th, 2019. This is this is that history that of how the United States, the King of the North, has been taken captive by the UN, by globalism. And then we're going to see it manifested in this Sunday law that's going to happen from November 9th. But it's the, the King of the North and the King of the South here, because the King of the South has conquered the United States. Biden is a globalist president, where Trump was not, right? So America is now sold out completely to the globalists in that history, in the history that we're in, under Biden. But we know that, that, that the King of the North is ultimately going to defeat the King of the South, right? And that's going to be the Republicans coming back and defeating the Democrats. 
But when they come back and defeat the Democrats, what's going to happen? The robbers of thy people are going to exalt themselves and establish the vision. Okay. Right. And then we're going to get, you know, he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. This is a Daniel, and he shall stand in the glorious land by which his hand shall be consumed. Is this not Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45? Right. You can just keep reading this and you're going to see Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. But is this also a possible representation of a threefold union? Yes. Yeah, it is definitely. But um, so we're just going to keep having this hour line repeated in different detail from these histories. Right. So so we can see that this is going to continue. We're going to get to Raphi and Paneum again. Right. But but this is more internal within the United States itself. But then it, you're going to get. Um, like in verse 16, he should come against them, shall do according to his own will. Right. We know that this is. Um, uh, dealing with the history of what's going to happen with with Rome, right? And then we're going to have it with papal Rome. So each of these histories just just illustrates our history, and and there's lots of symbols that can be be used here, right? That uh, that we're going to see as we start to look at some of these these numbers. Um, so, in other words, here we have in those times that there will be those that stand up against the king of the south. So they're standing up against the paganist thought process. Yeah. Also, the robbers of thy people, which we've identified in the past as being Rome. But could this also be the daughters of Babylon? Could this also be the, the Protestant churches that are taking the position of Rome? Okay. Um, well, yes. Dealing with the king of the north you're talking about? Correct. Yeah. So... When those robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, are they establishing the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation? Okay, explain more. Well, okay. From the study and from prior consideration, the vision that we're talking about here is Hebrew 2377 Calzone. Yeah. But Calzone properly applied is that not what we've seen in Daniel 8 concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation yeah so we're talking about the repeat of what had occurred from 723 to 1798. Okay. So 
the robbers of thy people are reestablishing this portion of history that combines paganism and papalism. Okay. Is that possible with what we're reading in this verse? Yeah. Possible. Is there, is there another way of looking at it? Hmm. Well, we're going to have to think about that. Okay. We're going to have to think about that again. Um. Yeah, I'm going to think about it. Hmm. Um, yeah, so there's some numbers here. I'm just looking at some numbers. Um, that relate to this. So if we go, um, so one of these things is the term Sunday law, right? Or not okay. term, overflow, right? Overflow. So we have this overflow. And, and we know that's re a reference to the Sunday, right? That's 7857. Okay. Now, if we count from July 18th, it brings us to January 20th. Now, now they're 21 years apart. So, so obviously, if we counted from, uh, you know, J July 20th in uh, 2020, or July 18, pardon me, in 2020, uh, we're going to come to uh, January 20th in 2042. So it's like, well, you know, that doesn't really fit. In order to get to January 20th, 2021, you have to start on uh, uh, July 18th, 1999. Right? And we don't mark July 18th, 1999. Another way to look at it is it's a period of 21 years and 187 days. It's another way to think about it. So, um, so I'm not really sure, you know, what to make of it. So that is what you would do is. If you counted from 1999, July 18th, and you counted 21 years, that'd bring you to 2020, right? And then we know from July 18th, if you count 187 inclusive days, it's going to bring you to January 21st. Right? Or January 20th. January 21st is going to bring you to when they sold the school of profits. So I'm just saying that this this overflow relates to this line that we have, but it, it represents 21 years. And I don't know, would, if we looked at July 18, 1999, is that significant in any way? As a symbol, like in 1999, it's going to be, um, you know, prior to November uh, to 2021, you know, by almost two years, two years, over two years. But anyway, you, you kind of see the point. There's some stuff that we have to do with these numbers to help establish what it is we're looking at, just as we did with the other sections. <clears throat> but 7857 uh, is, is an interesting number in that case. It connects July 18th to January 20th which we keep doing, 
right? We keep getting this January 20th. Okay? So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the study this morning, for the help that you've given us, and we pray that we can come together tomorrow morning uh, to complete uh, this understanding and this section. Um, we ask that you can correct us if there's mistakes that we're making, and we pray that you can bless each person. May your angels watch over them and that we can come together again to study your word. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.